Hey everybody, welcome to the Storytellers. And today we're gonna to take a tour of my studio. Now, as many of you know, uh, sometimes I can be technical, technologically uh, illiterate with this thing. <laughs> so since I have to film this on my phone, I'm hoping that this is going through. Uh, let me just check my YouTube thing. Okay, it looks like people are there. Good, 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 that's good. Um, so why don't we begin? Uh, this is where all the magic happens. I'll switch the camera around uh, so that you can see stuff. Settings, camera. Back camera. Done. Okay, there we go. So let's start over here. Everybody loves to come down to the studio and look at the original art. So we'll start with some of that. This is a piece that I did with uh, one of my influences, uh, the great Dick Sprang. It was a, a pinup piece. I forget for what, what book it was, because uh, it was so long ago. Uh, and then Dick wrote me a really nice note And we had, we corresponded. I have a letter from him as well. My studio is in the basement, by the way. So here's the stairs that come down. And I don't know if you can see them here, but those are all a bunch of my universal monster figures that greet me as I come down into the, into the cave. Uh, here's my spinner rack. And I've loaded it up with some of my work, but mostly of stuff that was on the spinner racks when I was buying them. Like my first issue of Detective Comics. Um, an early issue of the Fantastic Four that I had. In fact, uh, here's the first one I ever bought. 148. Early Ghost Rider. Some Flash. Iron Man. Let's spin this around and see what else we got. Yeah, a lot of this is my stuff. Nobody wants to see that. We want to see the old stuff, don't we? Okay, but I got a topper too, which is really cool. And as we come down the stairs, this is the the main space. And we'll point out some of this stuff as we go along. Uh, some Rex Morgan strips that I had done way back in 2001. Here's the original art for Detective 700. This is for that wraparound cover, the outside cover. This is a signed autograph of Stan Lee, a buddy of mine got for me. This is uh, like my fulfillment table when I sell comics on my website. You know, I've got a bunch of stuff out here. Uh, bags, um, Gemini, a mailers. Uh, there's some Chinu comics down there. That'll go out when people order stuff off the compasscomics.com website. See how I work that in there? Uh, this is my library of reference books. I don't use them as much as I used to because so much is available on the internet and I work digitally now. So it's easier to pull up a digital image um, and, and import it right into my iPad. But there's some cool stuff in there. Some autographed baseballs up there. Here's the one. When Chuck and I did signings for um, QVC in Pennsylvania, Philly, um, they had also had a contract with, uh, oh wait, that's the Whitey Ford one. Never mind. It's the wrong one. They had a contract with uh, Mickey Mantle. And uh, the guy who was running the show there sent me this as a thank you. Autographed Mickey Mantle ball because the Mick was my favorite player when I was a kid. And I always wore number seven, and I had a Mickey Mantle glove. So that was kind of neat. 
So here's the computer station. Batman and Joker and Mel getting ready to do some surfing. And this is a magazine rack that I got. Somebody had thrown out. It was a card and comic shop that went out of business and they threw it out uh, to the road and I found it and I grabbed some dude and had him bring it up to my studio. <laughs> and so I use it to display like all of my comics. Well, not all of my comics, but these are all, all of mine. And here's some really cool art. Classic. If Dan Frag is listening, you're going to enjoy this. That's a Frank Robbins original right there. And my one and only Jack Kirby Sky Masters page, but it just happens to be inked by Wally Wood. So I have a Woody and a Kirby. And then my Roy Crane Buzz Sawyer strip. Problem with working in craft tint is over the years, this. Uh, can see up here some of the the craft tint is fading and that's behind uv glass too and a kurt swan being inked by bob oxner who was my favorite inker on swan this was one of my first superman books and i really loved it and i it was up for sale one time and i i snagged it here i've got the duke watching over me Making sure, making sure I'm doing my work, Pilgrim. Okay, so here's my uh, flat file folder, or flat file, flat files, I guess you'd say. My oversized printer for uh, printing out blue lines if I'm going to ink uh, traditionally. Got a cutting board over here. That phony baloney Bob Kane drawing. <laughs> and in here is all original artwork. Like this is this is all my Phantom strips from the years that I worked on the Sunday Phantom. Well, this this is the this is the cover that's up uh, in the uh, Chinu, uh, not the Chinu, uh, Alien Almo, uh, Indiegogo campaign. This one's available if anybody wants it. This piece and this piece are available. So if you go to the Alien Almo Indiegogo page, you can snag these before the next guy does. Here's a page inked by Tom Palmer from uh, um, Bane, uh, Bane of the Demon, number one. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff in it. Uh, what do we got in here? That would be cool to show. Oh, I always like this cover. This is the cover from the uh, hardcover of Devil's Advocate that Chuck and I did. Oh, here's some neat stuff. These are my Vengeance of Bane pages from the original Vengeance of Bane. some early nightfall pages. I stopped selling my original artwork years ago because I could see what was happening and you know I'd see some of my stuff going for a lot more than what I sold it for so I just stopped selling it and every once in a while a collector will contact me about a certain piece and I'll dig it out and I'll sell it um, but that doesn't you know I, I don't put it up for sale myself. Now these people are going to really love to see. 
there's the splash page from Detective 664. That iconic shot that's been reprinted probably more times than in any other piece of art of mine. Uh, in fact, they used it. Let's see if we can get the yeah. In Batman the Animated Series, this is an actual cell from the Batman Animated Series where Bane lifts Batman up the same way he does here. And this is the first appearance of Bane in full costume with his henchmen from Vengeance of Bane number one. And this is uh, Two Originals by Johnny Hart. Uh, my uncle was a good friend of, of Johnny Hart's. And when I was a kid, um, I wrote to, uh, to Johnny and he wrote me back because I was inquiring about becoming a cartoonist. And he wrote me back and, and sent me those two originals and I've had them ever since. So then we come into this room here. This is actually my, the drawing room. This is where my drawing board is. Got some hardcover books up here, some reference books I like to, to use. Nice big drawing board. I've had this. Uh-oh, I just got a note saying the audio cut out. Uh, let's go back and see. Audio? Hello, hello, hello. Okay. It's showing we've got it. That's good. Okay. Let me just check in the room here and see what people... Hold on a sec, gang. I don't want to be talking. Audio's back now. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. All righty. So, anyway, uh, not sure where it cut out. Um, I think Julie said that it cut out when I was talking about the Phantom. So, we'll go back here and uh, just mention that um, Lee Falk had written me this letter uh, after I had reached out to him. And this was before, actually, I started working on the Phantom. So, uh, and then this was the main room, as I had mentioned before, when the audio cut out, uh, my drawing table. I've had this drawing table. Uh, I got the, the platform, the, the pole, the pillar or the post, whatever you want to call it. It's like cast iron from a, um, a former illustrator who gave it to me. And then I just went down to a hardware store, bought a giant piece of plywood, sanded it down a little bit. And that's been my table all these years, 30, 30, almost 37 years, 30, something like that. This has been the table that I've worked on, you know, nothing fancy, but it's big and it gets the job done. It gives me plenty of space. Got my TV so I can stream movies and stuff while I'm working, inking. Got some cool statues over here. I'm not a big statue collector or, or a toy collector for that matter. But every once in a while, I'll see some stuff that interests me. That Doc Savage one I had to have. This Phantom. Um, I think King Feature sent this. No, no, that was the other one. I don't know where I got that. Oh, oh a friend of mine sent that to me. Glenn Ford from uh, Fruit Publishing sent me that. Well, this will be interesting. Here's the original design for uh, Gunhawk and Bunny. It's been stuck in my uh, cork board <laughs> since then. I've got drawings by my kids in here when they were little, 
that I've never taken down. I haven't updated this scoreboard in 25, 30 years. Hell, it still has my wrestling, <laughs> my wrestling pin and and a letter from high school on there. Here's a photo from one of the bat conferences with all the guys from back in the day. Got some coasters from pubs and stuff. Here's Nolan's Pub from Long Beach that my father had started. It's still there, it's an institution in Long Beach, New York. There's one from the Florida Keys. Love the Keys. Here's where I broadcast from uh, usually. Here's my new microphone that I tried out the other day. Worked really cool. And my green screen. I just picked that up on Amazon. You know, it was like a, I don't know, 120 bucks, something like that. It's really good. And some more statues and toy stuff. Some art supplies that are getting outdated because I don't use them too much anymore. Just a bunch of comics. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I have them out here. Probably because I ran out of boxes. I don't have any boxes for them, so I just, I just stuck them on these shelves. Some toys over here. Cool Bane stuff. Major Matt Mason, if my brother is looking, he gave me that for my 40th birthday. <laughs> I showed this on another show, but if you hadn't seen it, it's my 3030 Winchester. I keep in my studio, and it's signed by the legendary rifleman himself. Okay. Star Trek and the Lone Ranger. I love the Lone Ranger too. These are a pain in the ass to get. Gotta own stuff from. <laughs> Just when they're small and they fall over. But what are you gonna do, right? Uh, looks like the sound went out again. Hello, hello. Oh, sounds there. Showing on you. Okay. Do the camera, switch it back to the camera. Done. Okay, now you got my ugly mug to look at. All right, gang. So uh, that was, uh, that's a tour of the studio. Oh, here's a couple things I forgot to show. Where is it? Bane. That's an actual luchador mask uh, a friend of mine in Mexico City had made, and then he gave it to me. It's sitting on a phantom bust, uh, and he's wearing a Make Space Great Again hat uh, from Tim Lim and Chuck Dixon's campaign. So that's kind of funny. This is neat, too. This is um, a CGC Superman signed by Stan Lee that my daughters gave me. Uh, not this past Christmas, but the, the Christmas before. So, all righty. I think you've, you, you, you've, you've done the whole tour here. I'm just going to put this like that so that I can read your comments. Okay. Because I'm not on, because I'm watching it through um, YouTube, uh, I can't put put your names up. Uh, unless I do it on here. Let's see. We got a lot of comments. 
Let's see what happens. I might be able to do it on here. Uh, ah, there we go. This isn't all of them because I think uh, I think it's cut off some of them. Nope. Rob Fellows. Okay, well, we'll do it this way. Rob says, uh, Graham Nolan tours, hail chat. Okay. <laughs> Roger Rivera. Hello, Roger. Roger was one of the stalwarts at DC Comics. A really great guy and a good man to have in your corner when you had trouble with uh, getting your checks from DC. <laughs> Hope, uh, hope, uh, retirement is doing you well, Roger. Uh, Dr. Mask wants to know what was the phantom picture? I have that print. Uh, I think they made prints out of it. Uh, I think it was originally supposed to be a, a card for a, like, you know, a collectible trading card. I mean, it's from 1994, so I can't, I can hardly remember. A man after my own heart, Dr. Mass says. Ooh, beer. Nikki and Whitey autographs. Fantastic. Yeah, I've also got a Pete Rose up there. Uh, Phil Rizzuto. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, here's, here's a scooter. Whitey, Mickey, Pete, and I can't read who the other one was. The, the markings left uh, fell off of that one. All righty. Let's see what else we got here. Thanks for bearing with this uh, mobile tech here. <laughs> ah, Dan was there. He saw the Sky Masters. <laughs> Excellent. George Travelos, Kirby is the king. Ja Rose says Sky Master, so dope. You should see the inking on that. I mean, it's just pristine, too. Um, Woody has um, Zipatone on there that hasn't even yellowed, too, which is amazing. George says, look at all those original pages. Yeah, that, that, that drawer is so full. And then I've got boxes of FedEx, FedEx boxes loaded with stuff, too. Uh, I kept most of the good stuff in the, uh, in the drawers. Is your wife like mine and says, what are your kids going to do with all this stuff when you die? <laughs> Uh, I, I hope I'll have sold it all so that she and I are living in some tropical splendor by the ocean. <laughs> the kids can earn their own money. Hey, Marcus. Good to see you, bud. The Devil's Advocate cover. Woo! <laughs> Pop Culture Avenger says, impressive. Jairo says, art studio, art gallery. Yeah. Audio out, audio out, yeah. Uh, audio back. Okay, that's good. Morgan Side says he loved Johnny Hart comics. Johnny Hart was an amazing cartoonist. Just amazing. Oh, Monster Fan noticed my Popeye books. Actually, before I uh, decided to do this uh, tour... Um, cause I didn't have a guest tonight. I was originally thinking of doing uh, EC cigar and that's why the Popeye books are out. I was reading up on it and stuff. And then it, it came to me that this would be, I think a little bit more fun uh, and different. I'm going to have a guest next Wednesday, uh, DC artist, uh, Doug Mankey and a fellow, uh, weightlifting friend is going to be on. We're going to be talking about storytelling with him. Reed Troutman says, my office is huge. I have a nook. 
Yeah, I've got some good space here. It's not, it's not, I, I think the camera probably makes it look bigger than it is, but um, I definitely have got some decent space. Where Bane was born. Well, he wasn't born in this house. This is the house that Bane built. <laughs> we had a little, a little cape in, uh, in Chictawaga where actually uh, the first drawings of Bane was done. Uh, but that's the table that it was drawn on, that's for sure. The Nolan Skull Cave has Wi-Fi, says Hein Diaz, who's a, who's a big Phantom fan. Reed Troutman says he wrestled for a couple of years. Tough sport. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the toughest six minutes you'll spend on a mat, is, on a mat uh, is working on a mat. It is tough. You're, you're busting. All right, now sound is muffled. I'm not covering the mic. Maybe I did. Where is the mic? I'm listening. I mean, the speakers are down there. I'm not sure where the mic is. Audio is back. <laughs> now, remember, guys, uh, every time the audio goes out, you get to drink. So... Make sure you uh, are holding up your end of the deal. Dan wants to know, what issue is that spider? Oh, the Spider-Man. Uh, number 70. It's part of the uh, the Kingpin tablet, um, uh, Magia uh, lizard storyline. One of my favorites. Oh, George nailed it. He said Spidey 70. Yeah. Uh, Buddy Callen says, awesome. Thank you for the tour. Lots of great stuff. George wants to see more stuff in the drawers. You want to see more? I'll show you some more. All right. Oh, Dan's going to go pour a whiskey. Let me go through. Let me go through. Uh, the rest of the comments here, and then I'll go back to the uh, the art bin and show you guys some more stuff. How about that? <laughs> you nasty boy. All right, bravo, Julie. Bravo, Julie. She had, Julie's getting props. You did a great job keeping the show guide up of studio on track. <laughs> well, that's why she's the boss. Yeah, we, we joked about doing a show together. We call it uh, Big Bald Bastard and Bossy Boots. <laughs> what do you think of that title? <laughs> well, this is cool. Jairo remembers reading my phantom strips with his, uh, with his dad. I think it's a, I'm assuming it's a guy, but I could be wrong. Uh, when he was a kid, that's cool. <laughs> Roger, sure, if you call it that. <laughs> Retirement, I, I, I think you're referring to. <laughs> It is. It's part of a storyline that's one of my favorites. Uh, it's got great Ramita art in it. It's got great um, Jim Mooney inks, and it's part of a, a just a fabulous storyline. I love it, and it's an iconic cover too. And uh, my kids found it. I think my daughter Becky saw it at a um, like an antique um, mall type thing, uh, and they all chipped in and got it for me for Christmas. It was really great. Was that a son of Frankenstein monster model I saw? Yes, it was. Was the fur coat the giveaway? Okay, wise guy. <laughs> hey, the stream stayed up. <laughs> you know, I haven't kicked myself off the stream in a long time, guys. So, you know, it's, it's other little glitches that are getting me. William Ramskill says, great studio, Mr. Nolan. I love seeing artist writers collections. All right. Uh, uh, 
No. Well, I know Joe too. Uh, I should have Joe on the show actually. Um, um, no, I, I said it was uh Mankey. It's going to be on Doug, Doug Mankey. I thought that's what I said. Tony Ellis. Hey, Graham, how's the weather? The weather. It's Western New York in winter. It's as good. We've had some sun, though. I'll say that. So that's not so bad. Well, Noel says, after last Thursday, a great idea would be after con season starts up again, have an episode where the four wives are on sharing their experiences living with you guys. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea. Okay, I got through all the comments. Let's uh, switch the camera around again. And we'll go through some of these drawers and see what goodies we can find. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to switch that camera back and put this down. Excuse me. And I'll put the camera here like that, and then I'll be able to actually pull stuff out and show it to you. Oh, here's a Aquaman cover I did with Batman when they were celebrating Batman in DC Universe. I got to do the Silver Age versions of both those guys because Mark Chiarello was the art director and he said, yeah, do it whatever way you want. Of course, he was so good that DC had to let him go. But then look where DC is now. All right, here's some... Uh... Here's a cool uh, splash page of Gearhead. It's by Bob McLeod. That's a nice one. And some more Bane. Uh, I keep wanting to say Bane Conquest, but it isn't Bane Conquest. It's Bane of the Demon. I should show those. Uh... Oh, hold on a second. I got one thing you're going to want to see. Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm back. Come on, where are you? There we go. This uh, old sketchbook. Is the very first drawing of Bane right there. And there's a uh, zombie and Trog. First drawing of them. You guys have probably seen that stuff reprinted in places. There's Bird. 
Those are all Bane's henchmen. And I did a sketch of the back of his head because I wanted to see what it looked like. But uh, as you can see in the original drawing here, he's got more more wires than he ever had. I kind of jettisoned that idea. Um, and then we closed up the mask too. But I mean, for a first drawing of the character, you know, pretty much about 90% is there, you know? So it, that's kind of cool. All right, now let's... I know there's some Phantom fans here, so I'll just pull out a stack of these that are just on the top here. Some cool Phantom Sundays from back in the day. This was a fun story, but it was a hard story to draw all the trains and, you know, keep all the actions within those confines. Plus, keep it within the confines of the Sunday formats. It's a tough story, but it ended up coming out really cool. Alright, so there's some phantom stuff. Let's check out these. Uh, some return to Monster Island stuff. I really like this piece. Captures the flavor of everything. one of the covers. This is the first few pages. This is our flashback to the original Monster Island. I like this one. Wow. Chilling out on the beaches of Coronado. I like this page too. I like the reaction shots. That's always fun to draw. One of my least favorite things to draw. Helicopters. See, Chuck? I even write myself into trouble sometimes. I do like drawing airplanes, though. Nice splash page. We're airplane fun and aircraft carriers. I like drawing that stuff. And one more here. So those are some. Uh, huh. Look at this. Here's the page, right? I printed it out in blue line on this side, and I must have had the ink was off or something like that. So I just flipped it over and inked it, reprinted it and inked it. Okay. 
Let's see. I think I got some. Do some. Uh, this is from Bane Conquest. Oh, you guys will like these. There's the cover. Got the whole book. And this sequence was fun because this is one of the few sequences I got to draw Gotham City again in all its glory. And revisit an old friend. Somebody was just calling. And that was it. Then the rest of the time we go up into the mountains with Bane and his crew. Let's see if there's any fun pages in here to show. This one was fun. Robot attack. Bane leaping into space, so to speak. And he's not happy. So... There we have it. I mean, I've got, like I said, I got, I got the entire Bane Conquest series in this book. Every, almost every page, I gave a couple pages away. Uh, get the cover to Chuck, um, but most of it is complete. Most of the book is complete. So, all right, my friends. Let's see what else we got here. Got more. Let me see if I can go back to where we were. Ah, Michael Garcia, hello from the Philippines. Well, hello from Western New York. Buddy Cowan says, beware the Chinoo. Yes, beware the Chinoo. Oh, Tony was asking because he's in Florida. The land of the free. <laughs> We're in the empirical zone of New York here. George loves Mark Chiarello's artwork. Oh, Mark's amazing. His artwork is great. Love it. DC is swirling around the drain. Yeah, we can thank AT&T for part of that. Have I made trades for other artists' art? Um, not really. Uh, I don't really collect a lot of other artists' art. Um, I got so much of my own. Um, there's just key pieces, certain things that I that I come across, like that uh, that Roy Crane piece. Uh, I traded with a dealer the cover to detective comics seven what was it 704 maybe it's the one where uh it's a close-up of batman and he's lighting a match in the dark so he's only illuminated by the match i believe john dell inked it um so i traded that cover for that roy crane piece and that was worth it to me to have to have a piece of that Brittany McManus, Graham Nolan is the man. Well, thank you, Brittany. Good to see you. Did Nolan say what kind of rifle is behind him? Uh, I'm trying to think of where. I mean, I did show the Winchester. That's a 3030 Winchester. 
If that's the one you're referring to. I also have a shotgun over there, too. That could have been the one you saw. Oh, there. Leg kick says it's a 30-30. Or he's asking. It is. It's a 30-30. Let's see. Holy moly. Wow, that is awesome. Wow. I'd like to see a live action. George won't sleep tonight. Uh... Did I pattern Bane after a particular luchador? No. George, yes. Penciled, inked, and lettered them. Of course, the lettering was a font. Uh, you know, I didn't hand letter them. Why the decision to have no mouth on Bane's mask? That wasn't my decision. Uh, DC Editorial decided that. Um, I went for a more uh, realistic look, thinking, you know, if, as we all know now, wearing a mask is a pain in the ass. Y you can't breathe. And if you're fighting at the level of Bane, you know, to have a mask covering your mouth and nose would be, you know, insane. So that's why I went with the, that's why the luchador masks are open the way they are. Uh, it gives them a creepy look as well. Uh, and it, it allowed me to make the character emote. But... Um, they wanted to go with a more uh, mysterious look, which I think was probably a good call. A little less S and M looking, um, so that so we we closed up the holes in the in the mask. Buddy wants to know Chuck. Dixon had a lot of input on design. Um, no, not really. I mean, we did talk over uh, the uh, what Bane was about because he had come up with Bane's background and where he was. So that's why I came up with the luchador angle was because Chuck had established him as, as growing up in this, like, you know, in Penadora uh, or Santa Prisca. I think Penadora is the prison. Um, in some little, like... Uh, you know, island nation type thing. Uh, I mean, I had certain precepts I had to put into it. We need a delivery device for his, for his uh, uh, venom. So uh, I came up with the idea for the, the tubes and stuff like that. Um, and then I patterned the look again, uh, the, the singlet, the wrestling singlet, you know, tied it into a wrestling thing um, and military style pants and, and, uh, and boots and then just, you know, made them black leather because, you know, that's means bad guys. <laughs> uh, do I still have those Hawkman art you did in the series? Yeah, I have a lot of Hawkman art. My old friend, uh, Marty Stein. Good to see you, Marty. Glad you're enjoying this. Some love for the late Norm Broyfogle going on here. That's cool. That's cool. Jasper likes the Bane Conquest covers. I'm particularly proud of those covers. Uh, I thought, you know, to do 12 straight covers and not repeat a motif um and have each one stand alone differently I, uh, I was very happy with how those came out um, yeah you and me both Jimmy <laughs> we'd all like to see a, a decent live action version of Bane Jasper's uh, scolding me for working digital on the Chinoo. He said originals would be awesome artifacts. I have to get them done on time, though. It's a little faster for me. 
Leroy, show us the rifle. I did show you guys the rifle. We need a Compass Comics Artist Edition. Well, as, as I turn out more and more Compass Comics projects, like Alien Alamo, uh, which is uh, in the description. The link is in the description, gang. So anybody who hasn't backed Alien Alamo, please go check that out. Um, you know, I'll have more and more stuff to, to put together for an artist edition. Yeah, wouldn't it? That uh, Detective Comics I showed you that was in my spinner rack, that uh, that the first one I ever bought had a Jim Apparel cover. And years later, I asked Jim about that cover I wanted to buy it from. And he said those covers were long gone. <laughs> I'd still love to find that cover. I love it. Tony Ellis knows John Dell. Uh, I believe you're right. I think it was a final night story. Do I ever plan on collaborating with Chuck again on a project? I've about had it with that guy. You know, after all these years, you know, I'm tired of him hitching his wagon to my star. Of course. <laughs> I love Chuck and, and uh, I love working with Chuck. So, you know, anytime our schedules are open together, he's busy doing his thing and he's doing great stuff. You know, he's writing better than ever, if that's even possible when he's writing more and more stuff. So, you know, he's busy doing his thing. I'm doing busy doing my thing, but uh, you know, we we're always looking for something to hook up on because we just enjoy working together. Yes, Frank. <laughs> we did meet John in New Orleans. I can't remember if he thought you were me or, or what it was. Yeah, but I, I do remember that. That was the first time I ever met him. Somebody saying Metals, Movies, and Brewski says he's got to get Brent Bane Conquest. Yeah, they did a nice you know trade paperback of it, but it would have been nice if they uh, did a hardcover. Would have been nice if they re-released the uh, Joker's Devil's Advocate as a hardcover too. They've never re-released that. George just backed Alien Alamo. Sorry it took so long. Well, better late than never, George. I appreciate everybody that comes on board and backs that that project. So thank you, thank you so much. And we have another backer here. Thank you, Metal Movies and Brewskies. Awesome. Dr. Mask met Jim Aparo at a show. Super nice guy. It was a big deal to me growing up. His his art was Batman. Yeah, Jim was a sweetheart of a guy. Uh, we really hit it off. And uh, we used to talk every week uh, during when Seinfeld was originally running because he loved Seinfeld. And, and I loved it. And we would call each other to talk about the episode that happened that came on the night before. And uh, I, I bought him a, uh, uh, a, a shirt of the Kramer painting. You know, if you, if you're a fan of, of Seinfeld, you know what the Kramer is and, and, and sent that to him as a gift. And he loved it. He called me and goes, I love it. This is great. <laughs> What type of Western would you like to do with Chuck Dixon? Okay. Now, Chuck's been in your ear and you've been listening to his feed because he's been saying, you know, I got to come up with the kind of Western I want to do. Well, you're not going to pin me down, Don. I can't. I, I don't know yet. I'm waiting to do the episode of Jim Appel. Alex Saviak spoke extremely high of his work ethic. Yeah, Jim was a machine. He cranked out, you know, he, he did mostly the one book, you know, The Brave and Bold, but he penciled it, he inked it, and he lettered it every single issue. And it was phenomenal every time. We were in uh, San Diego one year. Uh, it was the early 90s. And they had flown Jim out, and he had never been there uh, because they were presenting him with, I, I believe, it was the Ink Pot Award. And, uh, 
we were in the lobby bar of the hotel and it was me and Chuck Dixon and Jim Aparo and a couple other people were there and I can't remember who was there, but, but Jim was supposed to be in, in the uh, conference room or whatever it was where, 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 where they were handing out the awards. And uh, he wasn't there. He was out drinking beers with us in, in, in the hotel lobby. And all of a sudden Archie Goodwin comes out and he's got this, you know, this beautiful little statue and he goes, Jim, Jim, look, you, you got an award. And he goes, oh, well, isn't that nice? That's great. Thanks so much. <laughs> we just kept at it, you know, just, you know, he didn't miss a beat because the, the, there was not an ounce of pretension in Jim Apparel. Uh, and he was so amazing as a human being and as an artist. Uh, for him to maintain that level of cool was was really great. And we we had a fun fun evening that night. Leg kick one says thank you for the fun streams. You're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. A monster western. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I'm doing a sci-fi western right now, but a monster western, yeah, yeah. Maybe something along the lines of, like, Bone Tomahawk, you know? Jess was not a western fan. Well, I'm not going to hold that against you, but it does put you down a notch. Uh, any plans of doing a film noir-inspired story? Well, I've done a lot of film noir type stuff uh, with my work on Detective and on The Prowler. Uh, I love that genre. Uh, and as a matter of fact, yes, uh, my fourth book, uh, the, the next book is called um, uh, The Ghosts of Matacumba Key. And then the fourth book in the Compass Comics, an old verse, if you will, is going to be called Misty and Meathead. And that's going to be like a private investigator type noir story with a supernatural monster theme to it so uh yes jimmy says chuck and i created the best batman villain outside of maybe the joker well that's very kind of you well my friends i think this is going to wrap up the tour i've covered everybody um i hope you enjoyed it uh, I hope that uh, if you haven't checked out my Indiegogo campaign for Alien Alamo, you will take a look at that. Uh, I really can't do too much on the phone here, so uh, you can see the link is in the description of this show. Uh, so you'll see it on YouTube, or if you're watching it on Facebook, it'll be in there as well. So I'll just ask you to go to that, click it, and, and check out the campaign and consider backing it. Uh, this is going to be an amazing comic. Uh, it's going to have, it's full of heart, action, adventure, and uh, it's not going to preach to you. It's just pure entertainment and fun. Uh, and it connects with the Chinoo. All of these books are going to be interconnected. So Ghosts of Metacumba Key, the Chinoo, Alien Alamo, and eventually Misty and Meathead will all interconnect. Um, so you'll want to be on board for that and, and, and see all the fun little foreshadowing and Easter eggs that, that I have in store for that stuff. So, um, okay. Just, just check and make sure nobody else, uh, nobody else chimed in. All right. So thanks again for, for your time folks and for tuning in and taking a tour of, uh, the old cave here. And I will catch you again. Uh, on uh, Saturday, for uh, Saturday Morning Western Roundup, we are doing uh, probably the best Western that's been made in the 21st century, Open Range. So we're going to be talking about that. So you have your homework set for you. Go watch Open Range with uh, Kevin Costner and Robert Duvall. It's, a, it's an absolutely amazing Western. So check that out, and we will see you Saturday. Take care. Bye-bye.